Hello, everyone. We are back. Could my voice get any higher? <laughs> yeah, it could. It's Chrissy and Tanner, and we're here again, as we are every Tuesday, to talk to you about another ed tech tool that might be helpful for your classroom. And from what I understand, uh, today, Tanner has something very mysterious to share. Is that right, Tanner? Indeed, this is a tool called Mystery Science, which is one at Common Sense we've been looking at for quite a while. And we fell in love with it instantly, and it's only gotten better with time. Um, and we weren't the only ones because Discovery Education snatched them up and bought them. So they're now a part of Discovery Education, although the tool itself, the product itself, doesn't seem to have changed all that much after the acquisition. It seems like Discovery is just like, keep on doing what you were doing, which is a good thing because they do incredible things. It got a, it's got the rare five-star from us and five-star from the community. That is, You don't see that every day, folks. It gets a Macaulay uh, Culkin. <laughs> yeah, this gets the Culkin treatment. Yes. This one uh, presses across the board. The big thing to know about it is it is a paid tool. They have a great free trial system set up that makes it super easy to take a look at everything they've got to offer. If you do want to upgrade, this is going to be one of those things you're going to have to advocate for your school to purchase because it is pricey. It's about 1500 bucks per year. But this is a tool that we recommend so highly that this could be um, you know, a part of your K through five science curriculum. And I think it, it works perfectly as an anchor for that. Uh, so here we are in the tool. Notice our membership expired. <laughs> Let us know that. <laughs> no so, profit. So I can't show you everything, but we can see uh, quite a lot. Um, and the first thing you'll notice is it's separated into a lessons, mini lessons and distance learning section. Uh, the lessons are longer. They kind of average between 45 minutes um, to an hour, a full class period of content, whereas the mini lessons could take anywhere from, you know, five to 20 minutes, depending on how you implement them. The nice thing with all the mystery science stuff is they have great videos that all feature closed captions. Um, they're based on interesting questions. They show you nice little imagery. Um, and they, they're broken out into easily navigable sections. Um, so you can kind of jump to the part you want to get to. And you can really modularize everything in the uh, mystery science curriculum, I found. And the cool thing about the mini lessons, they show you a video that answers a compelling question. Um, and they give you some bonus information you can work through. And, and as a teacher, you can click through this and really control the experience, move it through. It can also be self-guided, totally a viable option to, to use this. And I think during the distance learning um, time, they were really well positioned. But the mini lessons, the, the really cool thing about it, I think, is um, at the, the end of every mini lesson, they give you some options your students can vote on. Um, and that drives then the future mini lesson. So it, it creates almost this uh, channel one-esque feel of live content um, that I think is really special. But the lessons, you know, this is where I think most people will be spending their time. The lessons all, just like the mini lessons, have compelling, kid-friendly curiosity driven questions. This is all about capturing curiosity and really delivering on that curiosity and making science really fun. Um, and the lessons have a nice structure here. Once again, you can click through to see these different, just go directly to those different bits and pieces. Um, all have great videos. I love the layout here. Um, you can even jump right to the activity part of the lesson. Uh, this is a great thing about mystery science is not only is there compelling videos that answer questions and 
encourage students to think deeply, but then they do activities that involve just common household items. Um, you know, so there's always some sort of active experimental component to every lesson. All of these extensions, these are part of the paid offering. So I can't show you that, but you can see that there's a lot there. There's extra reading, there are assessments, extra videos, activities, transcripts of everything. So you can print those out and hand those out for, to, to make it more accessible. Um, and they also have, you know, if you really like these hands-on activities, they actually sell these cool little kits these mystery pack kits that you can buy. And if you just, if, you know, if you're getting a little burned out on the screen time, you can just grab one of these kits, purchase that for a whole um, classroom and, you know, just focus on the hands-on activities, which I think, you know, could be really exciting for a lot of teachers, especially now we know there's a lot of fatigue around these kinds of things. Is the sweet spot for age like middle elementary? Yeah, I would say so. You know, these are, they, they have great accessibility options for the videos and they do, um, you know, mystery science positions them as being for a wide range from K through five. But I think, you know, this is really going to work best in three through five, I think, although it's, it is adaptable to um, K through two, especially if you focus primarily on showing a video and then diving right into the activities. Um, but I do think that three through five is really where this will probably um, be most appealing. And do you know if a teacher is trying to convince the administration of their school to adopt this, do you know if they provide standards information? Yeah, they do. So they really, th this was what got them on our radar initially is they are one of the companies that r really tried to nail what makes the NGSS standards, the next generation science standards special. And this tool was, was truly designed at that moment in time where um, people were trying to think through how curriculum needed to change to meet those standards. So every one of these lessons is very much connected to the next generation of science standards and is built from the ground up to meet those expectations, particularly asking big questions, getting students to do experiments, you know, um, really active inquiry driven learning versus just kind of drilling core concepts um, and memorizing those sorts of things. So um, as you can see, even in the how they break things up. It's very NGSS influenced here. You know, anchor phenomena. What's the phenomena we're going to observe? Let's, you know, ask questions about it. Let's look into it, find out information, and then let's test out that information through some kind of hands-on activity. Nice. Yeah, the questions, it, it's a simple approach in that way, but those questions get me. Like, why do people get car sick? Tell me. I want to find out. They're all... And they're so kid um, friendly and you can tell there are questions that, that kids would ask, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I think that that's a, a really special way to go about it too. Totally. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, thank you, Tanner. And thank you everybody for joining us again. Teachers, I know this is a tough time. You're doing great. Keep it up. Uh, please come and visit us at Common Sense Education, and we're here to support you. Um, and we hope you tell your friends, come back next week. I can make my voice even higher next time if that's something you enjoyed. Great. Thanks a lot, everybody.